Hi, I'm Clive Cox. I'm CTO of Selden, and I'm going to take you a quick run through the core aspects, the technical aspects of Selden Core open source. So Selden Core is a platform for machine learning deployment. Um, first couple of slides that really situate us, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, one is given by this paper by a set of Google engineers in 2015 from a NIPS conference, uh, where they talked about ML machine learning code is, you think you just need to concentrate on the core algorithm code, but there's actually a lot of uh, stuff you need to get right surrounding that code if you want to put something into production. So they turn that hidden technical debt in machine learning, so from the data collection, configuration, et cetera, up to the serving. In Selden, uh, we're focused on the serving infrastructure, monitoring, analysis, um, resource management. Another way of looking at it is, again, you think you just need to build a model. Uh, this uh, slide is taken from the Qflow deck, but you actually need to satisfy a lot of different tools in the end-to-end -end pipeline from data ingestion, data validation, building the model, training it at scale, rollout and serving. And again, Cell and Core, our open source product, is focused on rolling out serving, monitoring, and optimization. This is where it fits into your pipeline. And that's the reason we want to fit into uh, the ecosystems that exist in the Kubernetes world to provide end-to-end -end machine learning, such as Kubeflow, uh, which were there for machine learning deployments, and IBM Framework for Deep Learning, um, and several others which will be coming out in 2019. So that's situated what we're trying to achieve as in the product and the company in general. And now I'm going to discuss a bit about Selden Core, our open source uh, product. These are the core aspects of it. Cloud native, we want to run anywhere on top of Kubernetes. Um, ML tool, toolkit agnostic, we want to allow you, your data science team to use any training um, inference tools, um, make it really easy for them to use the tools they need and for then the, the final uh, deployment to be managed by Selden. I want to give you powerful inference grants, and I'll explain a bit about that. Fit into your CICD, so it fits into the CICD tools you're using in your organization. Um, and we want to allow you to different ways of production deployment options, such as Canary, um, and other options, shadowing, etc. So Seldom Core, our open source, our one requirement is Kubernetes. We sit on top of that. We sit as part of the cloud native uh, world. Uh, this gives us means you can run on-prem or in the cloud, any cloud. Um, and we're part of the ecosystem of tools that sit on top of Kubernetes, some of which we use, such as Ambassador, Reverse Proxy, Argo Workflows, and Istio Service Meshes, amongst other things. Uh, so Solder Core focused on the machine learning deployment. And as, this, we, as a data science team, we work on components that will help um, run alongside your deployment uh, to help you get the appropriate metrics and governance and compliance for your running machine learning models, such as the one just mentioned there, so multi-arm bandits for optimization, outlier detection, black box model explanation, bias detection, concept drift. Some of these are already you'll find already on the open source. Some of are in the roadmap for 2019. And the cell and deploy is our enterprise app, sits above this, allows you to manage um, the underlying open source, gives a rich UI, allows you to collaborate with um, both technical and non-technical people within a team for managing a machine learning deployment, and allows you to have more control and auditing um, visibility of your running machine learning uh, deployments. And this will be coming out later in 2019. So Selden yeah, we want to be completely ML tool agnostic. Uh, we want to allow you to use any training tools. And for inference time, we provide a set of wrappers to allow you to easily wrap up your inference code um, and then we'll, we'll manage it in Selden Core. We have wrappers for Python, R, Java, Node.js, uh, also Go. Um, we want to allow you to use any tool. Um, so SkyKit Learn, PyTorch, H2O. Um, if you want to train on SageMaker on AWS and then uh, deploy your trained models on Selden on top of Kubernetes on-prem, you can do that. Same for MLflow. You can train using um, MLflow and deploy using Selden. And we want to work also well with the various optimization serving engines which are out there, such as um, NVIDIA TensorIT, um, and also N Intel NGraph for your Onyx exported models, and Intel OpenVINO for your uh, image classification models. And there are some examples of these in the open source to show you how you can use these tools as well. 
So the summary of this slide is you really want to give you the flexibility in your data science teams and across the organization to use the machine learning tools you want to use and then will manage the deployment of those uh, resulting models and allow you to update and optimize those models when you put them into production. So as I say, the actual core thing of getting a, a model into production with Seldon um, Core, you really just need to dockerize it um, and, and have it respect our microservice APIs, which are defined in protobufferers and open API. And to make this easy, we um, allow you to use various open source tools, such as source to image which takes source code and turns it into a Docker image. Um, so here we have some source code, Python on the left, and you can choose one of our builder images for S2I, um, and then a single line, take that source code, wrap it up with the dependencies seldom needs, and have it ready as a Docker image that can be uh, deployed on top of Kubernetes and managed by seldom. Um, so we'll also be looking at other uh, tools that are out there, such as Canico in, in our roadmap. So the tools for taking your source code and turning it into a Docker image uh, will, should be very easy. And then this fits into your CI, CI CD pipelines as well. In terms of the actual building up an inference uh, uh, pipeline for when you, your code is running at inference time. Um, so once, you allow you, once you've got your component wrapped, uh, running in Seldon Core, we'll manage it, scale it, so yeah, that could be a single model, um, which we expose automatically by, uh, as REST and GRPC endpoints for your business to attach to, attach to and make predictions. Uh, but you can also turn it in real time, that, that running model into an A-B test between different models. So you can test out different versions of new models that you have, or you might want to run a multi arm bandit between different models to optimize in real time between those models. Uh, do feature transformations on those models, uh, put that into a separate Docker container and have that as part of the inference request response flow. And then add in other components, some of which we provide in the open source, such as outlier detection to, to give you warnings when there's outliers in your um, requests, and black box model explanation so you can understand uh, particular requests flowing through your uh, uh, inference graph. If, say, you're using quite complex models, deep learning models is one of your models, you can use explanation technologies, which we're building right now. Uh, to give you better understanding. So we'll allow you to build up these inference graphs made up of different com containers um, wrapped up to run the cell and call, describe that graph structure, and then we'll manage it um, and allow you to run that on top of Kubernetes in production. So how do you define those graphs? Well, we extend Kubernetes with a custom resource, a cell deployment, which has various uh, parts. Uh, one is a graph definition, where you define the graph defined on the previous slide. Uh, the components that make up your graph. Secondly, we have a pod template spec, which allows you to define all the dependencies that the images in that graph require. So it could be the amount of memory, CPU, GPU, what, what volumes uh, to uh, get the weights for the model. Uh, you can attach S3 volumes or other volumes, NFS or LusterFS. So all the requirements that for your image your, your, um, to run successfully in, at inference time can be defined here. You can then scale it, see the number of replicas, and obviously you can change this and update this as you, as you go forward. And then you can create parallel sets of these graphs. So you, these graphs are all declarative. So you can define the graphs, uh, store them in the, uh, your source control, and then order them as you make changes to them. So if your DevOps team, say, increase the amount of memory or GPU requirements, you can easily check uh, the differences between different versions of this and then push out changes uh, for the graphs as you, as you update them. So the overall architecture of Seldon Core, uh, so you define your graphs uh, for deployment once you've wrapped your images, pushed your images to Docker repos, you defined your graph of how you want those images to run together to create an inference uh, pipeline. You then deploy it by the standard Kubernetes API using tools, um, the standard tools in Kubernetes, be it Kube Control or Helm or KSonnet. Deploy that out onto Kubernetes. Uh, then we have an operator that's running inside the cluster that understands those graphs shown on the previous slide and then creates the underlying Kubernetes resources, the deployments, the services, the pods that make up uh, your deployment. So it creates those that are, as defined uh, to respect what you've defined in the graph and also automatically exposes REST and gRPC. So then your business applications can um, call make predictions against your running model. And then as your team, your data scientists and DevOps make changes uh, to that graph, uh, you can push those changes, those updates uh, to the graph, push them into the cluster. The operator will see that that, that new version of the um, 
definition, the new resource that's come in, the new cell and deployment, and then we'll, we'll um, create the underlying resources to respect the new version, be it to scale it or to change the structure if you're changing it to an AB test or some other version. So the external APIs that your business uh, would, uh, business apps would talk to, we have two, predict and feedback. So predict takes a wide range of payloads from simple tensors to uh, tensor flows tensors for more uh, uh, strictly defined uh, structure where you can define whether your payloads are made up of ints or bytes or booleans or whatever. And also takes um, ND arrays uh, to allow you to send in multi-type data such as strings and uh, floats, which is good for obviously natural language processing. And if that doesn't fit, you can also send in custom strings or binaries um, as, your, as the payload uh, that your model obviously will know how to handle when it, once it receives it. And you can change these payloads as you go through the components in your inference graphs. You might, they might come in as binary, say a compressed JPEG, uh, maybe get turned into a TensorFlow tensor at some point, and then eventually come out in the response as, and get turned into a custom string, finally. So that's the predict endpoint. That's what uh, your, AP, your business apps would use the APIs, be it REST or gRPC, to talk to your, to your model to get predictions. You can also, there's also a feedback endpoint, uh, which is used to send in whether the model is getting things correct so that it can use techniques such as reinforcement learning and more simple versions such as multi unbandits uh, techniques to actually um, improve things in real time. For that, you can send in a previous request you sent into the predict endpoint, the response you got back, and then a particular reward. So you might send in a reward of one if, you, if the model got that correct, or zero if it didn't. Uh, but most cases, you'll probably just be using it to predict. Um, um, we obviously, we'd like to hear of people who are more interested in reinforcement learning cases, as that's definitely part of our roadmap uh, to allow your models to uh, update in real time. So a quick few uh, uh, slides on other aspects of Southern Core, part of the roadmap, and some of the things we're doing right now. Uh, we definitely want to fit into your CACD uh, pipelines in your organization. So for that, we really believe in the idea of uh, GitOps, which is quite prevalent in the cloud native community. Um, so that really takes the idea that everything should be in source control and um, operations on your deployment, your CI and CD parts are fired off from commits into source control. So as your data scientists update the say, code repo on the left, uh, that would fire off a CI pipeline to maybe retrain the model and recreate new images for the um, inference uh, section, uh, which might update, data, update a Docker image repo. And then your cell and deployment graphs would be in source control with this repo on the right. Uh, they can be updated. And using standard tools, you can push that out to a Kubernetes cluster to update in real time your actual cluster. So we have particular examples in the uh, open source for finding particular instantiations of this. So using standard tools such as Jenkins and Argo uh, to give you a full CI and CD pipeline. And uh, obviously this depends on which tools you use, but we uh, most common tools we would fit into the standard CI department following the GitOps uh, paradigm. Uh, so yeah, just a quick uh, few small slides. And so we, have, we've, we definitely cover um, Want to cover there is optimization engines which are out there such as uh, as i said the ones at the top we already have in the open source and you're welcome to uh, look at those and also we're looking at some of the other uh, toolkits out there such as nvidia dali and nvidia rapids which is part of our roadmap so we'd like to hear a few uh, from you if you're interested in uh, using some of these uh, optimization engines in your inference uh, steps so as I say, yes, in terms of an organization, we definitely want to add components into your inference uh, pipeline that will give you extra uh, understanding of how your machine learning is running in production. Um, so give you, so these, these are the sort of uh, components that we work on as a team, so model explanations, multi bandits, outlier detection, trust scores for your models, give you confidence scores of the actual predictions returning uh, from those models, uh, concept drift, so you know when to retrain, and bias detection. So if you're interested in these, again, please get in touch with us um, so we can understand where the, our roadmap uh, should be heading. Um, so some deployers, so what, what, working, what we're working on as an organization in terms of a higher level UI to the open source, which provide a much richer um, um, way to view the metrics that are coming back from some of the um, components discussed on the previous page to show you the uh, uh, model explanations and concept drift uh, alerts as, as your models are running um, in production. Um, and we're looking for beta uh, partners for this. So if you are interested to get uh, uh, this high level UI as part of what you're doing in terms of deploying models, please get, it, please get in touch with us. 
So yeah, that's a quick one through the uh, technical aspects of Soul and Core. So if you have any further questions, please get in contact. Um, so I hope that has been useful. And um, as I said, have a look at the open source on GitHub and please uh, get in contact if you want to know further.